Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. The intent of Project Apollo was to get a man to the moon and back. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Nobody knew really how to do that. Uh, Jules Verne had written a book, you know, like years ago, that you know you basically have this humongous cannon and you shoot to the moon, but nobody figured out how to really land properly. And there were many discussions between NASA and the various major contractors of how to most easily get to the moon with the available technology and get it done by the end of the decade, which is what JFK had said. They were desperate for people with my background, fluid dynamics, thermodynamics, heat transfer. On Earth, it's relatively easy to heat something up or to cool something down. In space, you have two extremes. How do you really maintain a proper temperature for the lunar module so that all of the components of the lunar module were working properly? You have to periodically, like a barbecue, to rotate this thing so that on one side of the vehicle you've got the sun, the other side you have absolute zero. So if you just leave it that way, it'll be bad. You'll, you'll be boiling on one side and freezing on the other side. In the end, we wound up having the ascent stage represented by about 600 individual data points. In other words, we broke up the lunar module into 600 locations and we monitored or calculated the temperature of each one of these 600 uh, points. For the descent stage, we did the same thing, but we only did 400 points. The way you did the calculations, you would use a slide rule, figure out what the geometry was, figure out what the physical properties were, and then that would input into the large computer program where this was run with everything else uh, uh, together. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Oh yes, oh, I, 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 I was watching and I, and I felt absolutely, well, it, it was oscillating between, my God, you know, like we actually got them to the moon, but we didn't get them back yet. So the point is half of me was very happy that we at least got that far, but we didn't really return them yet. And it's only when they finally touch down, that's when it sinks in that it really was successful. I think we were too tired to celebrate, but. <laughs> But we certainly did have a couple of drinks. In, in my church, they realized uh, what happened. They said, well, can you tell us whether you prayed at all when you handed in all of your calculations? So I said, well, I did not view this as a religious experience. I do have to admit that I did pray that hopefully my, all of my calculations turned out correctly. Before Apollo, uh, nobody really ever interconnected the various fields of engineering all that much. But one of the things that was really heavily done was project management. Nobody had really done project management on such a huge scale. Many things were based on absolute need. Whenever you develop a brand new technology or you have a particular challenge, you have to develop new ways of doing things and better ways of doing things. So basically you improve uh, your whole technical situation. And that's what really happened. By having a project Apollo, the United States developed many different technologies uh, that were all additive in combining to make the United States number one in technology.